Hey everyone, Richard here, and I'm back with a look at Intel's Core i3 7350K, the first officially overclockable i3. And well, it has to be said, it's an intriguing product. The 7350 is priced in the same ballpark as the cheapest locked Core i5 processor. So the question is this, can an overclockable dual core chip match or even exceed a quad that's running at slower frequencies. Now, I've got to admit, I went into this one not hugely optimistic. In a world where an i7 easily beats an i5 in most benchmarks, clearly game engines have evolved to encompass many core processors, but at the same time, the i3s and specifically hyperthreading have historically punched above their weight. So the comparison should be fascinating. And as it's a KB Lake chip, it can be overclocked in two ways. The easiest way is to bump up the multiplier, but you can tweak the base clock too. My advice, stick to the multi only. It makes life a whole lot easier. Right then, so two cores, four threads. Let's see how fast this thing is out of the box. The first benchmarks we're running here are using 3000 megahertz DDR4. Now for that, you'll need a Z170 or Z270 board in order to run at max frequencies, which is also a prime requisite if you intend to overclock the i3. Our weapon of choice here is the MSI Z270 Gaming M3. Now this board shaves off a few luxury features, but retains everything you need to push your RAM and your CPU overclock. And first impressions? Well, let's start by looking at a game that absolutely loves single thread performance, Far Cry Primal. Here, we're looking at stock performance of the K-series i3, i5, and i7. Now, the i7 is 33% faster than the i3, while the i5 at stock clocks, remember, is only 12% faster. Now, that's not a bad showing for the i3, but let's take another look, this time with all three K chips overclocked to 4.8 gigahertz. The i7's lead drops to just 21%, while the i5, which gains the biggest clock speed boost with its overclock in place, takes its lead up over the i3 up to about 19%. Regardless, bearing in mind the price differentials between the chips here, that's a really good showing for the i3. But Far Cry really is suited to single thread performance. So what about a title that is better suited to multi-threading? Well, The Witcher 3 here is a great example. Again, with all chips running at 4.8 gigahertz and paired with fast memory, the i7 takes a whopping 57% performance lead over the i3 at identical clocks, while the i5 25% faster. Now, our methodology here for processor testing involves putting CPU and memory bandwidths to the forefront by removing the GPU as a bottleneck the best we can. And to do this, we run our games at 1080p on ultra settings using an overclocked Titan X Pascal. It's all about judging relative performance, but real life gaming? Well, with the i3 and to a lesser extent the i5, it's really all about the lowest recorded frame rates. Now, generally speaking, as long as a CPU can get me to 60 FPS and keep me there, I'm cool. But here's the thing, CPU utilization between games can vary dramatically. The i3 is a capable piece of kit and it will run many games at 60 frames per second. But sometimes, even overclocked to hell and back, it's not quite fast enough. Here's Rise of the Tomb Raider's taxing geothermal valley. The i3 drops beneath 60 FPS and barely holds on, even with a 4.8 GHz overclock in place. You need a fast i5 or an i7 to get the job done on this game. And as for Crisis 3, run this on the very high preset and the jungle stage will drop beneath 60 FPS on both the i3 and the i5, no matter how much you overclock them. Adjusting settings downwards will help, of course, so let's be clear here about what the job of a CPU actually is. It's all about processing game logic, of course, but also preparing instructions for the GPU. Cut down the graphics workload by tweaking settings, and there's less work for the CPU to do, resulting in improved performance. But let's go back to the original question I posed here. What should you buy? An i3 capable of overclocking or a locked i5, which costs pretty much the same? 
the results are actually really quite close. As we can see here, when we factor in the Skylake i5-6500, this is a quad-core chip running at 3.2 gigahertz. Assassin's Creed Unity will soak up however many threads you throw at it. The i5 is a touch faster than the overclocked 4.8 gigahertz i3, and obviously faster than the chip running at stock speeds. Ashes of the Singularity CPU test? Well, the overclocked i3 is a touch faster than the stock i5, but there's not really a whole lot in it. Far Cry Primal? Well, that game really does like high frequencies, so yeah, the i3 is faster, whether at stock or with the overclock in place. Now let's take a look at Rise of the Tomb Raider. The i5 is faster than the stock i3 and even a touch faster than the overclock chip. The Witcher 3? Interesting one actually. The i5 is about on par with the overclocked i3 but definitely ahead of the stock chip. So Far Cry aside, there is no knockout blow here for the i3. Games are indeed multi-threaded in nature and your i5's four cores are fully utilized in most cases. So I guess the problem here is one of value. The i5-6500? Well, I bought this. It came with a heat sink and fan and I simply do not have to worry about heat whatsoever. Stick it in a Z170 or Z270 board, pair it with fast RAM, and I'm good to go with some excellent performance for the price. Indeed, get the correct Z170 board, load up the right BIOS, and I can even overclock it, something I can't do with a locked Kaby Lake i5 chip. But for the i3 to compete, even with stock performance on a lot of titles, I need to buy a pretty expensive chip and a decent thermal solution in order to overclock it safely. Now, I got 4.8 gigahertz easily from the i3 70 350k and it could probably go higher but boy just like the other kb lake k chips i've tested it does get very very hot when you push it and if you're looking for value i just don't think the i3 7350k actually delivers but on the other hand, well, take a look at this. It's a Pentium G4560. I bought it for about 63 pounds here in the UK. Four threads, two cores, just like the i3, but locked to 3.5 gigahertz. If we equalize RAM speeds on both chips here at 2400 megahertz, something becomes clear. This Pentium offers pretty incredible value. Assassin's Creed Unity, 13% slower than the stock i3 and about 18% slower than the overclock chip. Rise of the Tomb Raider, about 15% slower than the stock i3 and 22% slower than the chip running at 4.8 gigahertz. But here's the thing, the i3 is 2.7 times more expensive than this Pentium. It's 175 pounds versus the 63 I paid here for the Pentium. Obviously, this G4560 is a pretty exciting budget product and I should review it in more depth, but the point here really is that to make an overclockable i3 attractive to enthusiasts we needed some really aggressive pricing and we didn't really get that so that's where we're at with the i3 7350k it validates the idea that dual core chips can still offer a lot if the price is right but my advice would be to save up the extra and get an i5k chip okay so that's your lot for now remember to like and subscribe to support digital foundry and i'll catch you next time thanks for watching